Unfortunately, pests are a part of gardening we just cannot avoid, but understanding what you are dealing with can certainly help you take control. Today, I thought we'd go through some common pests, how to identify them, but most importantly, how to control them. Aphids are tiny, six-legged, pear-shaped insects around one to two millimetres long. They can be white, black, brown, grey, yellow, and even pink, but by far the most common colour is green. Aphids feed on soft stems, branches, buds and fruit, and much prefer tender new growth. These little critters suck the sap from the plant, leaving behind curled or yellow leaves and deformed or damaged fruit and flowers. They excrete a substance called honeydew that can also promote sooty mould. They generally come in large numbers, so it's best to act as soon as possible. To control aphids, I recommend neem oil, eco oil, pyrethrum, a spray with soapy water, picking off with your fingers, pruning off affected branches and removing or growing plants that attract beneficial birds and insects. Scale are small flat oval insects that can be hard or soft and around five millimeters in length. Scale can be black, brown, gray or white and the hard scale insect has a protective shell like covering over its back. Scale feeds on young stems, growing tips, leaves and fruit, much like the aphid. They suck the sap from the plant, leaving behind distorted or yellow leaves that look a little like they are water stressed and blemished or distorted fruit. They too secrete honeydew that will promote sooty mould. To control scale, I recommend eco oil, rubbing off by hand or pruning off the affected branches and removing. Spider mites are incredibly tiny less than one millimetre in length. So to the naked eye, they just look like moving dots. They can be green, yellow, brown, red, or have two black spots on their back and resemble a spider, just like their name suggests. Spider mites feed mainly on the underside of the leaf by sucking the sap out, leaving yellow leaves behind or a fine speckled look all over the upper surface of the leaf, and eventually the leaves fall off. Another indicator that it's spider mite is the small webs they spin on the undersurface of the leaves. To control spider mite, I recommend neem oil, eco oil, a high pressure hose three days in a row, or pruning off the affected leaves and removing. We all know what caterpillars look like, although they can come in many different colors, shapes, and sizes. They love warmer conditions, meaning all your new spring growth is even more at risk. Caterpillars eat irregular shaped holes through leaves and fruit and leave black or brown droppings behind. This can help you identify them when they are not there or have moved on. To control caterpillars, I recommend eco oil, pyrethrum, or removing by hand. Just like caterpillars, everyone is familiar with what snails and slugs look like. They are in almost every garden. Snails feed on tender leaves, seedlings, decaying plant matter, and a whole host of other things. They eat large holes in leaves, sometimes only leaving the bare skeleton of the leaf. They will even eat your seedlings right down to the ground. If you look closely, you should see the shiny trail left behind, letting you know it was snails. If you follow the trail, you may even find where they are hiding. To control snails and slugs, I recommend putting down eggshell, seashell, or coffee grounds around the base of the plant as they can't slide over it. Snail trap, by leaving old pots upside down in a cool, dark, damp area. Orange hulls. Just cut an orange in half, remove the pulp, place it upside down, wedge it open for the snails to enter, and it should be full by morning. Or removing by hand. I say the best for last, a beer trap, or as some people call them, a snail pub. Come with me and I'll show you how quick and easy they are to make. Snails can't resist yeast. And of course, beer is packed with it. So as hard as it may be, you're gonna to have to give up one of those beers. To make your very own snail pub, first get an old plastic bottle with the lid still attached. This stops the rain or irrigation from getting in. Step two, cut a five to 10 centimeter arch in the side of the bottle around five to 10 centimeters from the bottom. Step three, fold the flap down creasing it so it doesn't pop back up. This gives a nice smooth surface for the snails to slide in. 
Step four, dig a small hole and bury the base of the bottle to the level of the flap. Finally, pour in your beloved beer. With all these control methods, you may still find pests appearing. So if all else fails, you can try some chemical insecticides. I hope these tips help you get on top of the pests in your garden and keep them away for good. Happy gardening.